Hey guys, it's Dakota from Foxhole Outdoors, and welcome back to the channel. Last week, we had a chance to talk about knives. Uh, I love knives. I'm an avid knife collector, as you guys saw last week. Um, I have tons and tons of pocket knives. Um, I have a ton of fixed blade knives. Uh, some of them you guys didn't see last week just because they weren't uh, feasible for bushcraft. They are more survival-oriented. Uh, they went on my bug-out bag or they're part of my camping kit. I just showed you guys the ones that could possibly be used for uh, bushcrafting. And so this week, I wanted to talk to you guys about the other uh, cutting implements, the other part of C cutting. Um, I'm a firm believer in always having, like, backups. Uh, and then backups for your backups. You know the old adage, one is none, two is one. I'm a firm believer in that. And so I don't think it's right for a bushcrafter to go out in the field with only one cutting tool. Um, and I feel like a lot of other bushcrafters feel the same way. Because when we watch uh, people like Joe Robinet, um, you watch people like um, Fowler, um, Chris from uh, Drop Force Survival, um, they all carry multiple knives, machetes, saws, axes, hatches, based on their environment. Um, and so, I'll probably have uh, a couple knives in my actual kit, um, because I feel like some of the knives may not be conducive uh, to cooking or cutting or skinning tasks, but they are definitely more conducive towards the bushcrafting aspects. Um, and I feel the same way uh, about uh, other things. Like, I don't, I don't expect my knife to be able to go and chop out a tree, chop down a tree. If... I had to, yes, I could, but do I want to? No. Uh, so the obvious fix for that is to pick a hatchet or an axe or both. Um, and so today I wanted to talk to you guys about my choices for my bushcrafting uh, axe, hatchet, and saw. Uh, so let's get the saw out of the way. It's just a classic, right? Everyone has one, um, or most people do. It's the Baco Laplander. It's $20, uh, extra cheap, extra good. I'll probably upgrade this later on, but I've used this for camping for years. Hasn't failed me yet. Same blade. Just a wonderful piece of kit. Just something that I really appreciate having for uh, when I don't want to buck a log with a, uh, an axe. Uh, next up are my axe and hatchet, which I do have some options. You know, I have a few hatchets, a couple tomahawks. Uh, and I have like seven or eight different axes that I could have chosen. Uh, but none of them really seemed conducive to being a bushcrafting axe. Right, so let's start off with the big boy, the axe. <coughs> this is uh, probably my prized possession when it comes to cutting tools. This is my Grand Forest Brooks Scandinavian Forest Axe. A uh, funny story about this axe. I actually used to own a different Scandinavian Forest Axe. And I ended up taking it on a train to Chicago, and then in Chicago found out that I wasn't supposed to have an axe on a train. And so I had to give it up to a local Methodist church, and the pastor there said they would send it back, but apparently they never got around to it. So uh, I went without um, a Grand Forest Brooks Scandinavian Forest Axe for about a year, and then my wife, my lovely wife, bought me a new one for Christmas this past year. Not this past year, last year. <coughs> And it is the same exact quality as the other one, razor sharp, cut down six or seven trees of this, haven't needed to touch it up at all, handles hung beautifully, now, no need for a metal wedge or anything, I don't know um, if you guys can see that, all right, but this is, that is the quality of a Grand Spores Brooks axe, right? These axes, these axes are hung so well that they don't need metal wedges. And I've, I've uh, rarely heard of a Grand Sports Brooks axe head coming loose just because of how tightly it's fit. So that's going to be my bushcrafting axe. This is going to be my main big cutting tool uh, because a lot of the forests around me are piney uh, and oaky and we don't have a lot of dry uh, weedy areas, it's mostly trees, so this is going to be really good for where I'm going to be going. 
And then my hatchet. My hatchet is where I had a lot of issues. Uh, because a hatchet's role can be fulfilled by a lot of different tools. You know, you can have um, just a normal hatchet, like a Husqvarna or a Grand Force Brooks. You know, just a 14-inch handle with a little pound and a half, two-pound head. Two pound is a really big hatchet head. Um, pound and a half head. And use that. You can have a tomahawk, like the uh, CRKT Chogun Woods Hawk, which has a hammer pull on the back. Or the Kanji has a spike for digging up the ground with a tomahawk head. Uh, easily replaceable on the field, you just grab a round stick, shark, shave it down a little bit, toss the tomahawk head on and start whacking away. Um, you know, and then there's like, uh, the more niche people like to use carpenter's hatchets, which are, are really nice, don't get me wrong. I just don't like how big the head is. Um, but I found, well I didn't find, my friend gave me, uh, for, for me at least, what is the perfect hatchet. Um, and it's this tiny little German town. Uh, I want to say it's a carpenter. It's like a carpenter's hatchet, but I don't think it is. It's not as wide. Very small. Uh, I need to sharpen it up a little bit. But I actually, uh, for this handle, I ended up taking uh, a 27 inch axe handle that I had lying around, cutting off the, the bottom part of it and using that. And that really gives it a nice comfortable grip. I can choke up really tight on it and uh, use it for like finer carving tasks. But also the reason why I love this so much is because of this back hammer part. Right? So I'm going to get up close again so you guys can see this. But this back hammer part right here, right? It's waffled out and it's just so, so amazing. I, I love this little hatchet. I've taken it camping a few times. Um, and it's been absolutely wonderful and perfect for me. Because uh, I'm not saying that this uh, these things are going to be perfect for you guys. This is my kit. This is what works for me. Um, and this little hatchet works. Uh, I'm going to probably be buying a little Grand Force Brooks um small hatchet handle for this in the future because I do love Grand Sports Brooks handles. I found that more often than not they usually fit perfectly on almost every axe that I've ever personally rehandled. Um, so I definitely want to get one of those and put it on this, see how that fits. I've never actually had to use the hatchet handles. Um, but this is my little bushcrafting hatchet. It's lightweight. It packs a wallop because of all the weight. Focus it on that tiny little uh, blade area. Uh, it gets very sharp. It holds an edge for a very long time. Uh, and, you know, if I ever find, like, wood with some nails in it, I can just yank out some nails. So that's super nice. Um, and there wasn't any need for a testing video because these these tools are tried and true. Right? Everyone knows the quality of Grand Forest Brooks, and this has gone with me on multiple adventures at this point. Um, even with my little ghetto handle, it hasn't come loose. Uh, it's stayed relatively sharp, and it's done everything I needed it to. Baco is reputable. So there's no real need to go out and test these things to bring them along. Um, and that's it, guys. I really hope that you guys enjoyed the video, and I hope that you guys can just leave some feedback on what you think about my videos and, um, you know, camera editing tips, some video editing stuff, um, and just... Uh, what you guys carry with you in the field? What hatchets, axes, saws do you, you guys carry? That's what I really want to know. This has been Dakota from Foxhole Outdoors, and I really hope you guys have a great weekend.